when we began, virtually everyone that we spoke with said that it was impossible. The determination to prove to the world that it was possible to create a completely self-sustaining living building sent a gutsy environmental nonprofit on a journey that would defy modern building construction and put a six-story office building in a quaint Seattle neighborhood on a world stage. This building is really supposed to be a quantum leap forward for, for the regional, national, global green building industry. Literally represents a manifestation of all we know and can do today. It was profound and it touched people around this world. The Bullet Foundation had never built a building before. It's sometimes to your advantage not to know what can't be done. The goal was the Living Building Challenge, the toughest of all green building standards. We identified it as a robust and rigorous environmental standard that would create a framework for our decisions moving forward. We were really trying to do something that was cutting edge as a demonstration. That's what we ought to do. It had never been done on a commercial scale. The thing that we all understood at the time was that nobody had experience doing what this vision set out to accomplish. I don't think there was any part of us that weren't excited about the challenge. To meet the Living Building Challenge, the Bullet Center would have to produce as much energy as it used. Location was critical. We were going to be investing maybe a million and a half dollars in solar equipment for our roof. A solar roof in shade, of course, is just a roof. We have to have direct access to sunlight. And as a consequence, we wanted to be someplace where we were guaranteed that nothing taller than us would come in to the south. The 14,000 square feet of solar panels that cover the roof create an annual surplus of energy that is sold back to the city grid. One of the great opportunities with the project was to suspend belief for a while and just go for the performance and then see where it took us on the aesthetic side. The building really, really focused and was designed in a way to maximize natural daylight penetration. So most of the time when you're in the building, you really don't need electric lights in the background to provide ambient light for the tenants. The building would have to collect all water it used from rain and manage all its waste on site. All of the water that falls on the roof of the building gets collected in a 56,000 gallon cistern in the basement. All that water is stored there and as the building needs drinking water, it goes through a robust filtration system. Coined the nervous system of the building, the basement is also where all gray water and solid waste from the building is treated. We have composting toilets, the only six story building in the world with composting toilets. So all the toilets empty into one of 10 composting bins in the basement. We use a highly controlled aerobic process to break that material down, and at the end we have a field-ready compost. The building has no parking, but easy access to transit, a park across the street, and an irresistible staircase. We worked hard to glaze that, make sure it had great views from the site, give people a good alternative to the elevator. One of the most prominent features of the building is the wood. It's all local, it's all sequestering carbon, and it all comes from FSC certified forest. We designed the building so that it could last for 250 years. The big breakthrough with the timber structure was we can pull it inside, we hang the walls and the windows, everything's just bolted onto this timber frame that's inside the weather, inside that condensation zone. One big hurdle during construction was avoiding building materials that were on the Living Building Challenges Red List, a list of 14 classes of chemicals that can be harmful to the environment and to your health. We reached out to hundreds of manufacturers over the course of years, and um, we learned about what chemicals were in the products, which ones could be avoided, really learned at a pretty intimate level how to make a building less toxic. All the sustainability features of the Bullet Center are considered state of the shelf, not state of the art. Really this was taking technology that was out in the marketplace, could be ordered off of a website or a catalog, and then just engineered all in one place together to work as a single system. Really trying to do everything all at the same time. In some ways, that's the chief innovation. The Bullet Foundation says the center has met all the requirements of the Living Building Challenge. Once it is certified, it will be the first living office building in North America. The remarkable thing about this project is that we hit all of our marks, and our marks were so astonishingly ambitious. I've heard Dennis say before, if, if it exists, nobody can tell you that it can't be done.
The six-story Class A office building was completed in March 2013 and was 84% occupied by December 2014 with the Bullitt Foundation and several other tenants. What we proved here is that you can build a building that people really want to be in that has superb performance. The goal is really to change the marketplace and to drive higher levels of performance in green building. It's so much fun to be a part of a story that is broadcasted so broadly. The Bullet Center has captured national and international attention from the media and the sustainable development community. It's often been referred to as the world's greenest office building. The University of Washington Center for Integrated Design operates a visitor center on the ground level with exhibits on sustainability and private tours of the building's many features. Most important lesson so far is that it's possible to do a six-story office building in the cloudiest city in the country with solar as the only power source. That to me is pretty amazing. It sort of reframes the debate on renewable energy and, and really what's possible with sustainability. 